Hey my punk rock hoopers, welcome to the video on utility belts. We're going to start pretty basic and we might punch it up at the end, but overall we're going to start slow and easy, uh, the rumors are true. And for real, the more I worked on this video, the more I wanted to add, so I had to like kind of rein it in a little bit, but it's still kind of long, so it's really worth it and if you need to stop and look at some pictures and really freeze frame some things, that's okay. And if you have questions, you can ask me questions in the comments. I'd appreciate that. I know we've talked about it before, but here's the deal. It's all about the pockets. Pockets are where it's at. Um, pockets are empowering. Pockets are just about everything. And when people talk about their outfits or their dress or skirt, what's one of the first things they say? Check it out. It has pockets. There's a great article right now on Vox about the politics of pockets. Women's pockets were private spaces they carried into the public with increasing freedom during a revolutionary time. This freedom was very frightening. The less women could carry, the less freedom they had. Take away pockets happily hidden under garments, and you limit women's ability to navigate public spaces, to carry seditious or merely amorous writing, or to travel unaccompanied. And in case you don't know what seditious means, because I sure did, Sedition is overt conduct such as speech or organization that tends towards insurrection against the established order. Guess what, my loves? Seditious times. We are living in seditious times. And according to my secret boyfriend, Henry Rollins, he's my boyfriend in the way that he doesn't know he's my boyfriend. Maybe you have a secret boyfriend like this. He says, this is not a time to be dismayed. This is punk rock time. And this is what Joe Strummer trained us for. So let's get going, okay? This is my friend Brecken. I've showed her picture in other places. But we're going to make this style of utility belt. It's one of the easiest to make. It's simple. And it's totally possible that you'll have like a bunch of these by the time you're finished. And that's okay. They're cheap. They're easy to make. And they're it's super fun. And practical. Hey, win, win, win. So this is Susie Blue Hair's butt. Thanks, Suze. And she took the same style that Brecken was in and made it fancy, and this is what we come up with. So don't judge the humble beginnings, okay? Okay. The first right thing to do is find yourself a pair of jean tops or skirt or whatever. And this is a pair of pants that actually I think I'd like rubbed a hole in the thigh, which if you're a larger girl, you can relate. Um, and I like these jeans a lot. So um, I put these on and, well, I just cut the legs off and then I put them on and here we go. So step one is to round up your pair of jeans or shorts, but it needs to fit in the waist. That's the most important thing on this beginning one. Pair of fabric scissors and some straight or safety pins. Whoops, sorry to lie to you so early. We need you to get another pair of like utility scissors. So you'll have your fabric scissors and your utility scissors. And do not use your fabric scissors to cut through the zipper. It will screw them up. And notice here how we have a piece of ribbon tied on our fabric scissors so that we can keep which is which straight. Okay. It's also helpful to round up some markers um, or tailor's chalk. I just had a random silver sharpie because it would show up in dark denim. So think that through too. Whatever you're marking needs to have a contrasting marker color. Okay. So now that we've stopped talking about materials, I want to talk about fit for a second. This is my sister, Dr. Blythe, and notice how she wears things a little bit looser on her waist as opposed to me wearing this Tidy McTiderson pants tops. I don't know if it was small because I was wearing tights underneath it or I've gained a few LBs, but whatever. It's fine. And um, But I wanted that kind of snugger around the waist because I wanted to put significant things in my pockets. And the heavier things you put in your pockets, the more that needs to fit on your waist. Okay? And let's talk about body shape for a second too. Where do you want your waistband to fit like notice on dr blythe hers is a little bit lower and this is my friend yet here who's a belly dancer so she um has a very she doesn't have a like she's more of a square like she has some waist but not like i have one and blythe doesn't have um a significant waist like she has more of a little belly which is fine but think about your body shape this is one of my loves nicole and she we're fitting something on my porch there so with some bags of leaves. But 
we're fitting it on her and notice her body too. So she has, um, she's pretty chesty and she has a large belly. So where do you want your utility belt to fit on your body? And if you put things in your pockets, will it stay up? So these are things to kind of play around with as you put things on. Alrighty. So now it's time to get scissoring and marking. The front can be real tricky for a couple of reasons. So here's the deal. Notice on the left hand side, as you face it, I like angled the pocket pretty tight, but on the right hand side, I kind of swooped it down, kind of mimicking my sister's utility belt, right? So kind of decide what you want the look to be when you use your marker. So see how whatever my sister used for the front of her belt, it kind of like had the front pocket like overlaid. So it was like seamed on the bottom. So I, you know, hers like followed that seam line. So on the right hand side of my belt there, I, um, of my pants, I was making kind of mimicking that swoop. Okay, so you can decide that. Alrighty, so the actual fabric of the pocket will not lay sweetly behind the denim fabric unless you tack it on that way with like embroidery floss or something like that. But you can tell that this person cut it so that the embroidery on the outside would show up and then the white pocket isn't that cute. Um, we can make it cute, but it's not cute by itself. And sometimes you'll see a contrasting fabric um, underneath the pocket, like it's done in a gingham or something. So that's something to look for. Okay, and here's where I goofed something up. So I want to uh, point it out that, first of all, I didn't cut the zipper off enough. And then second of all, the, fa the fabric part of the pocket went all the way to the zipper and was attached there. So when I was all busy hacking away, I didn't notice. And I cut part of the pocket off, which is okay, but you have to decide where do you want, like, I need to modify this pocket, essentially. Does So does yours adhere to the zipper, or does it do differently? So notice that before you cut, okay? So if I had assessed that part about the zipper and the pocket attachment, I could have not followed my white line that I have here for the cutout and gone all the way to the zipper and made, like, a bigger patch space there. And whenever you have, like, kind of awkward denim spaces, you can always add a pocket or a patch or some buttons or... No real estate will go unused, okay? This might be a no-brainer, but pin your pocket up out of the way. Otherwise, when you get all scissor happy, or maybe, let me make an I statement. When I get all scissor happy, the pocket's going to get hacked away. And really, the reason we're doing this is so we can have nice, roomy pockets, right? And not shorten pockets because I had to, like, have a workaround. Unless you have something specific going in that pocket and you want it to be snug. Like, if you have a small phone or, I don't know a tile in case it walks away. I don't know. All right. So powering through the zipper, is going to be pretty tough on your scissors and do don't do like me, like get up a little bit closer to it. So you don't have that part hanging off. Cause then you have to cut it again, which just puts more wear and tear on your scissors. Like Bob Vila says, measure twice, cut once, which by the way, he never adhered to. Okay. Okay, so part of your design and when you just trace it real quick is if you cut this section out right here, it creates more room in the skirt or the um, utility belt. So when you're putting it on, there's more free flowing and it feels more easy and less like you're jamming yourself into a small skirt. All right, so it's uh, it can feel like less constricting. So if that constriction is a problem for you, open this part up. Here's a belt that Susie did, and she cut the space out in between the pockets and um, just added some tool there to make it cute so that she didn't feel exposed or like her butt was hanging out or whatever. But I can see that she was going for this big loop here because it was good to put on hoops and stuff to put a hoop on there. And I don't think this one actually had a back pocket, so she added that pink one there, which is super cute. The other option is just to cut like kind of a wavy line or a, you know, a swoopy line in between the front pocket and the back pocket. So that gives you some side space there. And um, I'm gonna show you how to tack on a little pocket on that area. Okay, the butt part here, you're gonna cut this part out. And unless there's something really cute there, just go ahead and cut it out. Cause you can add a scarf or you can add, you can add a bunch of things in there. But if you're worried about your butt being overexposed, we can put something there. But go ahead and cut this out. This gives you a lot of movement and space into the utility belt. Here's me just cutting with uh, using the boomerang app, by the way. It's pretty cute. But just cutting the with some scissors and 
I'm not being super married to following the line or anything. I'm just kind of hacking it up, you know, punk rock style. Alrighty, put my utility belt on. You can see the difference in the front there where I digitally did not make it match at all. And then the side where I have the open space there. And notice how it's kind of blocky and choppy how I cut. You can make a smoother seam if you want. Or also know that there's ways to fray that down. And also putting in the washing machine will fray it up pretty good too. Okay, as promised, this is what I did to add more pockets to this blank space right here on my hip. I just took a little front pocket off a denim shirt that was way too small, but real cute, and uh, put it right there onto that blank space. And I pinned it on, and then I used embroidery floss. And I'll show the details of that in a follow-up video. But you can like go ahead and plan your space like that. Next step is to check your fit. And don't worry if it's really terrible. We can probably fix it. Like, maybe. And you notice in the previous picture, mine is still pretty tight. I'm not in love with it, but that's what I'm working with right now. And I can add or take away later. If your belt is too big, take in take it in like this. And my sister actually left this. She didn't cut it out. She did hers like this. And you might need a sewing machine for this. Um, or you can do with embroidery floss. You are going to need a thimble though, because that's very difficult to push a needle through all that. And a true story, I actually pushed a needle through and it got caught on my thumbnail or would have gone all the way through my thumb. It was the grossest thing ever. My sister pulled it with flyers. You don't want this to happen. Trust me. Okay. So if you have too much and you want to go ahead and sew it, this is Ms. Yet's belt and she took a section out and then just sewed it with a sewing machine. You are going to need a denim needle and sewing machine skills. And you know what? Now's the time to learn, or you can get a tutorial from a friend who knows how to sew. Or you can watch one of these 9 million YouTube videos, but you can do it, okay? But you do need a denim needle, probably. Here's my girl, Nicole, sewing on her uh, utility belt. And that's just a plain brother sewing machine. You can get those at, like, well, anywhere, Amazon or wherever, so... And sewing skills are always good to have, by the way. And these are fun to start using them on your utility belts because it's a good way to learn. And if you mess stuff up, you'll just like put a patch over it. So, and you learn by doing, okay? All right, the same principle could be applied for adding fabric in. So you can decimate a waistband on something else and add more length as you need. So instead of shortening the, the waistband belt, you would be lengthening the waistband belt. And putting that extra space in front is always a nice spot, or you can put it on the side. The pockets don't have to exactly line up over your hips, for sure. And I'll show you how to do that in a separate video on how to not be married to the pockets being where they originally were. Another option is that you can add an entire section. Okay, so kind of like this one is. So go through and make a list of the things you wanted to fit in your pockets and do you have pockets or ways to carry them. Here's an example. So this Fred bottle is a flask size so um, and it sold water in it but you could carry whatever you want to. I'm on the wagon so mine had tea or water in it and I shoved it into one of my pockets on my sister's belt while she was wearing it and it wasn't quite deep enough so the bottle would have slipped out if she was hooping or bubbling or whatever. So do a trial run. Stick things in your pockets or clip on your keys or your hoop or whatever and see if it works. And if not, let's add some more. Okay, so after that little aside, just think about like, okay, you've made your utility belt. It's way too short or there's a big section on it that you hate or it's sticking you or whatever. Just cut it off and then do what Courtney did. And oh, this your utility belt has to have belt loops for this to work, but just run a scarf through it. Or if it didn't have belt loops, then you could just hack it at one inch intervals make a with your scissors and then run the belt through, thread it through that way. So do the Courtney. I almost forgot one really important thing. I was inspired by this uh, denim, I think it was a skirt that said one tough babe on it in embroidery. And I thought, what if we wrote ourselves a really sweet note? Because your lower back is where according to Louise Hay, where you feel the most support. Or if you have back pain or something chronically going on, you're not getting enough support. So here's my solution. Get your marker and write, whatever your name is, I got your back. So this says, Blythe, I've got your back. That's my sister's name. And mine says, Rowan, I've got your back. And there are other times, like we were at a hottie hoop camp when we first made these and so we use them like yearbooks and we wrote sweet things to each other on the inside to really 
commemorate the event and to show each other how much we loved each other and how much we have each other's back. So do you have your own back? Write it down. So as you're traveling around doing whatever, this is actually a screen grab of Susie's Instagram while she's traveling through Arkansas, people are going to notice your belt. It will draw attention and you're just going to rock it. You're just going to rock it. All right. And this is how you can help me spread the word about this utility belt tutorial. Get your marker and write somewhere on the inside or outside of your belt, punkrockhoops.com. All right, punkrockhoops.com. And when people approach you, say, hey, take a picture of my belt and then let me flip this over so you can take a picture of this website. And this is where the tutorial lives so you can make your own belt. That would really help me out. Mucho thank yous. Lastly, let's go rock your pockets, right? I look up at the night sky. That's a pretty universe, God. You are wearing it well. Thanks, I hear in a faint whisper. It has pockets. And if you're not wearing pockets, it's because you don't want to, okay? This is my friend Lacey, who's obviously got a great sense of humor. She doesn't need no pockets, okay? Lastly, if you could subscribe to this channel, it'd be awesome. I'll be putting more updates up on this YouTube channel. And if you're reading this on the blog, I'll keep adding subsequent tutorials as I figure out little pieces. These aren't terribly difficult to make, but there's a lot of ways to make them cuter or shortcuts and ways to like eliminate some of the learning curve. And I'm happy to share that with you. Much love to my vibe tribe, the hottie hoopers, the punk rock hoopers, the hottie hoop camper. I mean, like just an incredible amount of people have gone into making these and having a good time and just being really fun together. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you watching this video. If you want to show off your goods and your wares and show me that you got your look down, go ahead and use the hashtag, get your look down. And I'll check it out on Instagram and on Facebook and any place else if you want me to. So use the hashtag and I'm happy to clap and cheer and be excited for you as you get your look down with the utility belt. Thanks for watching.